So how do you defend against art poisoning? It's really pretty tricky. Um, believe it or not, your operating system can support static ARP, which is exactly what it sounds like. You go into the operating system and you hard code it. You say this MAC address goes with this IP address, always and forever. Now it's one thing to do that for your router. And if you ever go to a security conference like SANS or Black Hat, you take a training class, a lot of times they'll tell you, step one, day one, create a static ARP entry so nobody poisons you on the network. They don't want you getting attacked while you're there. They make you bring your own laptop and everything. So ARP poisoning is a real easy way, especially at public networks, hotels, conference centers, to steal other people's traffic. If you know the real MAC address of the router, if you can get that, you can create a mapping. Pretty cool. Um, if you don't have that capability, but you manage the network equipment, you can actually leverage a feature um, called DHCP snooping. Now we talked about DHCP snooping a little bit yesterday. This is cool. Um, it's really one of my favorite things that I teach about because the attacks from in the middle are very, very effective, right? We could take over anything everywhere, take over everybody, poison the entire enterprise. How do people stop it? Well, all you have to do is turn on a feature called DHCP snooping, and then it has a sister feature called dynamic ARP inspection. And this isn't just a Cisco thing. We teach Cisco and CEH because it's the most common, but if you've got you know, Procurve or something, it'll do it as well. So what's DHCP snooping do? We go into a VLAN and we turn on DHCP snooping. Now, everybody is untrusted. It means nobody can make a DHCP offer. We go to the port that is trusted, and we make an exception here. This is to allow DHCP offers. So you can only make a DHCP offer on a designated port. This stops people from doing rogue DHCP servers. Sweet, right? Well, the other part of DHCP snooping, and this is where the snooping name comes in, he actually does analysis or eavesdropping on the DHCP process. So remember when a client and a server talk about DHCP, there's a discover message, there's an offer, there's a request, there's an acknowledgement. It's fairly stateful. DHCP snooping takes the switch and it tells it to monitor this process, almost like a stateful packet inspection firewall. And he says, if you watch this closely, you can learn what MAC address was just assigned an IP address. You could actually learn that, you could discover it. And what he does is he takes that mapping and he puts it inside of a DHCP snooping binding database. I'll put DB. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a list of different MAC addresses that have been assigned different IP addresses. The real security from DHCP snooping at this part of the story comes from the first feature. The fact that everybody in the VLAN is untrusted and only trusted ports can make an offer. The second part where it's actually doing the snooping, the benefits aren't so obvious yet. <clears throat> when we look at part two of the story where you turn on a, a feature called dynamic ARP inspection, which stops poisoning, what dynamic ARP inspection does is it says the same thing. It says, when you see a client and server send an ARP request and an ARP reply, we want you to eavesdrop on this. Look at the MAC address to IP address combination in the ARP reply. And what I want you to compare it to is a DHCP snooping binding table. So by watching or monitoring the DHCP process, let me know if this is making sense to everybody. By monitoring the DHCP process, we can learn which MAC addresses and IP addresses go together. We can then enforce policies to stop our poisoning by looking back at that binding database. So these two features really work hand in hand. We stop rogue DHCP servers, we learn about valid DHCP assignments, and then we can also prevent ARP poisoning by doing ARP inspection. If you're skeptical, which I encourage everybody to be, you know, the first thing that you should wonder about, almost like a salesperson or a recruiter told you, is, well, okay, well, what am I missing? What is, what's the way around this? What will an attacker do? 
And the first thing that kind of stood out to me when I was reading about it is I said, well, what about things that don't use DHCP? I've got static IP addresses on important devices. So if you're a router, if you're a firewall, if you're a printer, if you're a load balancer, if you're a server, you've got static IP addresses. So DHCP snooping and dynamic ARP inspection don't help me. And that's just part of the story. It can help you if you create something called a static ARP ACL which is kind of a funny name. It's just static IP to MAC address mappings that you teach the switch. And then when he's leveraging dynamic ARP inspection, he'll validate those as well. So if you know the IP address of your router and you create a static ARP ACL and you turn on dynamic ARP inspection, nobody can poison the router anymore. Pretty cool, right? And again, what I love about this stuff is that it's free. You know, how many organizations do you know that don't need more help with cybersecurity? Everybody does, right? You get audits, you've got a laundry list of problems. Most of them have got blockades in front of them. They're problems we've known about for months or even years. But it's expensive hardware that needs to be replaced, or it's software that can't be patched for one reason or another. What's so cool about this is the features are pretty easy to understand, not real complex, and we can take the existing hardware that we already bought. We've got nice switches. We've got nice network equipment. We just have to go in and turn on some of those features that are there. So by using existing features, we can take a network and make it much, much more secure. We can stop a lot of these attacks. And people go, oh, well, I work for such and such company. We've got 10,000 employees and nobody's ever poisoned our network. Good, great. It's like you didn't get ripped off because nobody tried. That's not a very good policy. Um, you know, you, you want to not get ripped off because even if somebody tried, they're going to get discouraged because so many easy attacks just don't work. And if they move to a weaker target, they're going to be able to have their way with them. But your network is just too hard to compromise. So again, all they're showing you here in the slide is a show IP DHCP snooping binding, which is a MAC address to IP address mapping. You've got the length of the lease, how it was obtained, DHCP snooping, the VLAN, and then the associated port number. And here's just some examples. Again, EC Council always uses Cisco for their examples. If you use Cisco, fantastic. You know, Cisco switches, both iOS and Nexus have supported this for many, many years. So you're going to find good support. But even if you use non-Cisco gear, good chance it's going to support it as well.